What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are in full-fledged winter here, and it is no better time than now than to review the SSI Dry Suit Diver course. And we're going to be looking at each chapter and breaking it down to six different videos because there's six different chapters in this series. And hopefully our goal here is to help you pass your SSI Dry Suit Diver course course. Now, quick disclaimer, please do not use this video nor any of the videos in the series for you to go out and dive a dry suit. You need to make sure you're seeking out your local SSI dry suit instructor to get proper training. But with that being said, let's jump into the SSI dry suit diver course. So starting out in chapter one, we need to discuss why do people want to dive when it gets cold, whether they're diving in the wintertime months or they're simply diving to an area where the water drops off drastically. We all know what a thermocline is. You go so deep, water can't or the heat can't penetrate but so far. And of course, we have a thermocline. It gets cold. Maybe it's a local quarry or a local lake and you want to explore further. But diving a dry suit, not only can you dive year round, you can also explore the areas that you typically would not be able to go. Now, later on, we're going to learn a little bit about the cost of diving and how, yes, dry suits can be expensive, but considering the fact that they allow you to dive year round, you're actually going to lower your cost per dive by being able to dive year round. So what actually happens whenever we dive in cold water? What physical effects happens to our equipment? Well, typically we can have what's called a regulator freeze up or a regulator icing and several other things that can happen where systems malfunction. And anytime that we're diving colder environments, we need to make sure that our equipment is rated for, say, those temperatures. And you can check with your local training center or your local retail center where you purchased your equipment to make sure that it's going to be suitable for cold water diving. Typically speaking, though, if you have a regulator that is an ice diving model or a cold water reg or even an environmentally sealed reg, most most likely it's going to be suitable, say, for that cold water. But what about you? Just because your equipment's rated for it, are you actually equipped for it? Now we need to talk about the physiological effects of cold water on our body and how does it actually affect us as a diver. Well, in the SSI React Right program, we learn about hypothermia and how hypothermia actually affects us. This is basically when your body's core temperature drops and a process called blood shunting sets in. This is when you start losing blood from your extremities. It comes back into your core to keep you safe underwater and to keep you from going into hypothermia. Well, by preventing blood shunting from happening by wearing thick enough suits, or in this case by wearing dry suits, we can actually stay warm and stay more comfortable while underwater. Now, there's other benefits of just simply staying dry and warm in a dry suit. A lot of times, a dry suit can actually protect you from the environment. If you're a public safety diver or, say, a commercial diver like me, I wear a dry suit a lot of times just to protect my skin from the hazmatic materials that's in the waterway, such as gas and oil and other things like that. So they can keep me dry, they can keep me warm, but they can also keep me protected from those hazmatic materials, and I'm actually not getting infected by them while I'm out there diving. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about here in chapter one, of course, is the cost per dive. And if you've been in this industry long enough, you will understand that, yes, diving costs money. Sometimes it does cost quite a bit of money. And a lot of people don't want to put out that price tag there for a dry suit. You know, a cheap dry suit is going to cost you around a thousand and I've seen them upwards of four and five thousand dollars, depending on what features you get and what undergarments you get with them as well. But however, if you see how much more you're actually going to be able to dive in the places that you're going to be able to go for that cost, then the cost itself per dive actually comes down. So don't look at buying a dry suit as, well, it's a lot of money. Look at it more as an investment into your diving career or into just your diving journey as well. And as you start seeing that price come down, you'll realize that the cost of a dry suit is actually not as relevant as what you think it is. So guys, that's going to be it for chapter one. Stay tuned because there's five more videos in this series. And I'm actually going to put you a playlist down below in the description below that we've already done on dry suits, where we talk about the different types, whether it's neoprene, bi-lam, tri-lam, hybrid style suits. We did it in a complete series of how to take care of them. And it's more in depth than the series you're watching now. This first set of series videos that we're doing is simply a review session to help you pass your dry suit course if you're taking, say, the SSI dry suit program. But guys, we really do hope you enjoyed this. Definitely stay tuned for the other videos. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.